Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in today's video, we are going to talk about the game console Play With Passion. It's the new 7-inch handheld and there are some new developments with the 7-inch handhelds. And we were complaining, or better said, I was complaining about the D-pad for example, and they finally fixed the problem. Now we're going to get two joysticks with more like a Switch look-alike joystick. So I'm very curious how these are going to play and how they have mapped them. So it comes to begin with within this very nice collectible box. And I can already tell you the first thing that I noticed that it feels quite cheap and very lightweighted. Alright, so in the box we are going to get of course the device itself. What is very strange, they are saying that you're going to get a 64 gigabyte storage, but it's basically two times 32 gigabytes. We're having the basic toilet paper manual, as you can see, nothing really special. Here we're having the device itself, and I must say, it looks very nice. There are some interesting things that we're going to talk about a little bit later. In the box, there are not a lot of cables, most of the necessary cables, or nothing at all. All right. But the design itself of the handheld is something completely different. And as you can see, the 7 inch display that comes with this device is not an IPS. So that is a very big bummer, if you ask me. All right, so let's talk about the controls because here there are some interesting things. So at the left side, we're having the analog stick and I can tell you it feels quite nice. The D-pad, finally, they have chosen to give us a normal D-pad with the previous model always getting four little buttons. But the D-pad itself, I can already tell you it is not the best D-pad I have played with. And if you're playing with fighting games, I do notice that it is responsive, but not the responsive that I really want to have with the D-pad. Nevertheless, here at the left side, we're having volume control and there are just basically buttons that you need to press every single time for going up and down in the level. At the right side, we're finding again an analog stick, but this thing is mapped with the A, B and X and Y, like all the previous models. And here we're having the select and start, especially the select, because this is going to need with the arcade game for giving a credit. They also fixed the problem with the shoulder buttons. We're having four shoulder buttons now. We have a headphone out, a Type-C for charging, the on and off switch, the input for the CF card, and we're having an HDMI out. And that is something that is pretty unique with these devices, because the HDMI is something you don't see very often. Most of them have this very crappy AV out signal. I was very surprised to see with the TV out function that it works plug and play. You don't need to mess around with extra settings in the settings menu, it's just Plug in the device, keep in mind you will need a little converter from mini HDMI to HDMI, but it works like a charm. And if you're looking at the back of the system, they improved two things. First of all, they give it a little bit more curve. And as you can see over here, and it will give you a better grip on playing. And the other thing is we're finally having two speakers. And I can tell you, they sound not bad at all. The display itself is in seven inch that has a resolution of 1024 by 600. Sadly, what you can see is not an IPS like with previous models, so we don't have this perfect view angle. But before we are going to continue with the review, I just wanted to talk about the specification. So this device has a 7 inch handheld. The resolution of the display is 1024 by 600. It is running on a quad core A7 that is clocked at 1.3 GHz. The storage capacity is 64 GB divided over two 32 GB SD cards. 400 milliamp battery life, so it will give you a couple of hours, most time around 2-3 hours, what I understand of. And of course we have the HDMI 1080p solution now. Like the G1000 mini arcade machine, this device runs on Linux. It has support for many simulators. Here we have in the top row that are more like the quick shortcuts. It's always strange that they add these, but you can change them out. And if the file behind it gets lost, you have a dead link and you can't use it anymore. We're having the game option, let's check this first. Here you can see we're having CPS, Famicom, Game Boy Advance Color and Classic, Mega Drive, PlayStation 1 and Super Famicom. Here we're having the option for listening to music, watch a pretty picture and here we have the option to watch some videos. The browse function is just if you want to remove something from the system you can do it over here. We're having settings, language, theme, 
This is basically the display that goes out more like the screensaver, backlight settings, key tune. So if you want to change the tune itself, you can do that too. This sounds a little bit better. And here we have the restore default settings and here's some information about the system. As you can see, this is version number one when making this video. When it comes to the games and the system itself, you can remove the SD card. But it was also very strange, this device runs on Linux. And you can see when booting it up without an SD card, you're going to get something completely different. It still will boot up the system itself, but as you can see over here, we have a completely new layout. Select and start at the same time, like with the G1000, we can do a quick load and quick save. The analog stick is also very responsive. The game runs very well. But there's a very unique way to play is play with two dual sticks. So you need to get used to it, but it's pretty really funny, funny. Okay, we jump up right here, turbo button. And you can only do that when you're having a decent D-pad.
All right, so for the final conclusion of this, let's say PS7000, the game console with play with passion, I can say that I was very surprised to see what are we going to get. The only complaint that I have with this device is that it doesn't have an IPS screen. I personally prefer to buy a version with IPS and let's say, let me pay 20 bucks more, but it will make this device perfect in my opinion. The D-pad is pretty good. The dual analog stick is super, yeah, it's pretty pointless in my opinion, but still, for what we're going to get, it's not bad at all. I really like it, and don't get me wrong, even without the IPS display, it looks pretty good. The D-pad is nice, and overall, I think this handheld can be one of my favorites. So yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think of this, but I thank you for watching, consider subscribing, because we have a lot of great stuff coming up for the channel to review, and I will see you in the next video.